today we are going to be talking about Heather Knight, a computer science professor at Oregon State University, who put out an article just about, uh, actually on uh, two weeks ago on uh, May 27th, uh, titled, Tesla Autopilot Review, Bikers Will Die. Well, of course, doesn't that just scream <laughs> clickbait? And as such, it does. It does scream clickbait because she barely talks about how bikers are going to die. So I have a copy of the article here printed out on reused paper. Isn't that nice and lovely? Yeah. So anyways, and of course, I'll recycle it when I'm done. But let's just go over her article first and then morph into what... Mm, Basically, myself and uh, those who are familiar with him, Mike had planned, and uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. So let's get down to the article. Tesla Autopilot Review, Bikers Will Die, by Heather Knight, a roboticist. She goes on basically to say her colleague and her got to test drive in Tesla Autopilot on highway curvy California roads, up by the ocean, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Tesla autopilot feature is basically a button to turn on the car to turn the car into autonomous driving mode my first response to that it's not autonomous it is a driver assistance feature and I can't stress how many times Tesla has stated that it is not autonomous the car will speed up or slow down based on what's in front of it and supposedly stay in the lane, supposedly stay in the lane or follow turns of a road automatically, which it does. Now she put in here, autopilot classify, classified about 30% of other cars and 1% of bicyclists. But she didn't really expound on that. How so? Was it visually? Did the screen only show 30% of other cars? Well, my screen will show... Uh, zero cars right now, but there's one next to me there, one there, one there, and one there. So four, so that means it's showing zero percent. But guess what? Even though it would show zero, at least it'll still show the two that are right there in my neighbor's driveway. Or not show it, but it knows they're there. So exactly how did it classify, or what she, is she basing that on? The radar on the cars can track th up 30 plus objects at a time after the 8.0 firmware update. So, is it only showing on the screen, not showing? Uh, can you expound? I mean, you're a professor, apparently, and a roboticist, come on, you got a degree? I don't have any degrees. And, well, I'm still smarter than her. Anyways, uh, yes, I am narcissistic. Carrying on. She says, I'm concerned that some will ignore its limitations and put biker lives at risk. Uh, some will ignore its limitations. Kind of like you, Heather Knight. Um, you I mean, we're, we're a paragraph and a half in. I mean, just a tiny little bit here. And she's already called it autonomous mode. And it's, it's not an autonomous mode. It's autopilot mode driver assistance feature so right off the bat she's already ignoring its limitations and complaining about them uh, her background herself and Dylan Moore work for Dr. Wendy Jews research group at Sanford University's Department of Mechanical Engineering the group sometimes dubs itself transformers because their research is half social robotics and half autonomous driving. That right there tells me that she should understand the differences between autopilot, which is a driver assistance feature, and full autonomous a little more than she is, uh, you know, than, than, it, than she is showing. Uh, we often find that insights in one domain cross apply to the other. Long story short, Dylan and I are familiar with the shortcomings of robot, robot perception systems and care about interface design. So they already know about shortcomings and they care about more about the interface design. Uh, so the interface, not the actual function of it, apparently. Since it's our field, Wendy Ju had us... I could be pronouncing her last name wrong. Asian, Latin, Asian names are... Uh, it could be pronounced you, I'm not sure. Had us rent a Tesla. That way our group could experience the, and I'm, and I'm stressing, closest thing out there to consumer autonomous driving today. 
and once again, I'm stressing closest thing to autonomous. So she again admits that she knows it's not autonomous. She goes down, goes on to break down uh, the different features um, and rates them like door handles that recede into the frame of the car. She gives a B, super sexy, but watch your fingers. If you leave your fingers in there, guess what? Nothing happens. You won't even get a mark on there. Uh, when Gene was three, he left his hand in there. Uh, he wanted to see what would happen. But uh, yeah, it's Gene. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, Gene's my youngest. Um, nothing happens. The door handle goes in there. You're not going to get pinched or hurt. Uh, she gives an A-plus to automatic lane switching. She loves it. Intuitive, reliable, and super cool. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, super cool. Uh, curves. Car turns too late to cue human trust. Autopilot's doing 98% of all my driving. Of course, with my express supervision of the vehicle as we go. And I have to greatly disagree with that. And I am also on Autopilot 1.0. Uh, she gives a C to user set target velocity. Uh, she calls it dangerous. Autopilot seeks to achieve the cruise control speed as long as there's not an obstacle. Well, no shit. Uh, why would it keep speeding up if there's an obstacle in front of you? This works fine on con con consistent street like a highway. But we discovered the hard way when we exited the highway onto a country road. Switched on autopilot. And it tried to go from 30 to 65 at maximum acceleration. Expert users would be familiar with this, but we think Tesla can do better. Maximum acceleration! False! Acceleration of autopilot on traction aware cruise control or autopilot to reach desired speed is actually only about one to two fifths of max acceleration. In fact, I found that the autopilot or traffic aware cruise control going up to the desired set speed is actually too slow and too lethargic, where I actually help it along by pressing the accelerator. Whoops. Oh. I hit the brake. Um, so I actually help it along by pressing the accelerator to help it get up to speed. It, that's how lethargic it actually is. But I guess to someone who's only rented a Tesla, uh, even one-fifth of acceleration puts most cars to shame. Uh, but it's mostly the responsiveness of the car where there's no hit the accelerator, leg, leg, leg. Then it starts taking off. I mean, compared to like a Dodge minivan or a Geo Metro or uh, insert a kind of box into the, line, into, you know, into the empty space here. Yeah, um, I guess it could feel like... Uh, a, a piece of craps maximum acceleration. I don't know what she's driving as a daily driver. Um, now, situation awareness display. She gives it A plus, but but then goes on to say, not being able to classify objects doesn't mean that Tesla doesn't see that something is there. So she flat out admits that the car may see that something is there. But given that the lives are at stake, we recommend people never use Tesla Autopilot around bicyclists. Why not? Serious question. Why not? She hasn't said anything about why not to use it around bicyclists. I use Autopilot anywhere the car will let me actually turn it on. In fact, even on firmware 7, Autopilot saved a kid from getting run over by my car. How? The stupid kid was either talking on his phone or playing Pokemon Go and veered off the sidewalk right into the street to catch his fake monster. Kid would have been better off doing LSD or some sort of other hardcore drug instead of, you know, that's how normal people find their fake monsters. Instead, he wasn't paying attention to what he was doing, veered off the road. There was no humanly way possible that I, as a driver, could have reacted. Now, once again, I'm going all the way back to firmware 7 here, which had the ability to only track about five to six objects at a time via the radar and camera system, compared to now, which we're at 30 plus, as well as different elevation. I have a whole video out already explaining the entire radar system, Doppler radar system of the Tesla vehicles that they use with um, its Bosch hardware. And um, this, this, you know, talking about how the radar detects objects. And guess what? The car slammed on the brakes so damn quick that nothing happened except my car came to a stop. I would not have been able to move 
even remove my foot from the accelerator fast enough to move it over to the brake to be able to slow down to avoid hitting the kid. If I did not have the car on autopilot, or it would work actually the same with traffic aware cruise control, the kid would be dead. How do I know this? Because, I mean, I've hit raccoons and ended up picking skull fragments out of the titanium armor shield on the bottom of my Model S. Carrying on. Uh, my comment was, did it detect the bikes? Uh, she says, never used Tesla Autopilot around bicycles. Did it detect the bikes or not? She doesn't say. She just says, don't use it around bicyclists. Well, then, if you're just going to blanket statement, don't use it around cars. Don't use it around people. Haven't I gotten to the point already where I've already shown autopilot already detects a person walking across the road? I mean, we tried killing Mike. Link to that video is in the description box below, and it will be in the end screen of this video. But we have tried killing Mike, and Mike is still alive. Didn't the autopilot try killing Mike on firmware 7? Yes, it did not detect him. Was it in part because of our test that Tesla just could not do um, by putting an actual person out there and testing it that maybe they developed it further to be able to detect it in firmware 8? It's a good chance, probably. But either way, she is on firmware 8. It can detect people. I'm going to get to a little more into that than this in a minute. I want to finish just pointing out some things in this article, and then I will go and talk about what me and Mike just did a week ago and what's coming up very soon. Self-locking feature. We stepped out of the car to take a photo, leaving the keys in the car, and this super capable, intelligent car locked us out. Fix this bug! No. Engineers should account for how people will actually use a technology. They already did. The receding door handles made this action seem pr particularly petulant. My comment to this. Common Sense 101! In self-locking vehicle, don't leave your effing keys in the car! Seriously? Even on my old truck, which was not a self-locking vehicle. If I left the keys in the ignition on my old truck, guess what, and wanted to get out of the vehicle and close the door, guess what I did? I rolled the window down so if for somehow it did lock, I could stick my hand in and open the door. Oh! <gasps> And you're working with or doing something, what, at Stanford? My God! This is why I have no faith in modern universities, because they're giving degrees to complete idiots. Personally, I think this was not a bug, because this super smart, super capable, intelligent car was actually, I think, based on this article, smarter than you, Heather. Yeah. The car was trying to keep a complete moron from getting back in and maybe killing somebody for admittedly ignoring everything autopilot is and making it out to be something it's not and then complaining when it was something that it is actually not. And then she goes on to say, drum roll, please. Winner of the features, uh, how do they put it? Her favorite Tesla features. And then she said, drum roll. Winner, situation awareness display is great because it helps the driver understand the shortcomings of the car. I.e., its perception sucks. Providing the driver an accurate mental model of the system probably saves lives, and robots in general would benefit from communicating with their limitations people. Communicating their limitations to people. So it was her favorite feature of the car, yet she says it sucks. 
It's perception sucks. And she gives this her, the, the the number one winner of her favorite features. Did she not just bash this for not giving enough info? And personally, this car gives tons of info. Shows you the speed limit sign. It shows you the vehicles all the way around you. Yeah, it might not show a little picture of a car. I got a notification. Oh, good. Yeah, my credit card payment went through. Cool. But it, it might not give a picture of the cars on the side, but the screen uses its sonar. Autopilot 1 had a 4-foot sonar range all the way around. Autopilot 2 vehicles have an 8-foot sonar range all the way around. So it shows you where every object is immediately around you. Not just that, based on the radar and the camera, it can show you the, all the vehicles in front of you. And based on Tesla's awesome radar software they developed, not only can it see the vehicle in front of you, it can see past that vehicle to show you the vehicle in front of the vehicle in front of you. And it shows that on the damn screen. She went on to add a statement to her article, added May 29th, 2017. Thanks for all the interesting comments, questions, and personal insights on Facebook, Twitter, and Fortune.com and Medium. My concern was that treating autopilot as fully autonomous system might be a reckless for a person in a car, but fatal to a bicyclist who has a lot less protection. It's not autonomous. It's not advertised as autonomous. It has safeties in place and limitations are built in. Based on everything, and I'm, I'm linking the article uh, in the description box of this video, but based on, and I didn't cover absolutely everything, there's a lot of smaller sentences structure, but based on everything, she knew the limitations of the car. And it sounded like she was also trying to bypass the limitations and defeat them. She also adds additional details. Uh, someone had asked her if they were given training before being allowed to rent the car. The answer, she said, was no. She was not given training before renting the car. Was that her fault? No. Yes and no. It was the fault of the rental company. But based on what she does, Heather does, she should have read up on it more. Uh, also, she could have read the owner's manual about autopilot. If you touch the control button on the screen, go to settings and owner's manual. Wow, there it is. Driver assistance features and about the driver assistance, traffic aware cruise control, about auto steer, about auto lane change, about auto park, about lane assist, about collision assist, and speed assist. Um, overall, I think this took me, and this is just the on screen, everything's here on the 17 inch touch screen display in your face. It'd probably take me 10 minutes to read through all of it. And you guys were actually riding along with me on the first time I used autopilot on this 90D, my 90D car, my autopilot 1.0. Uh, you can see the video where me and Gene were driving home and wow, was it amazing. There really wasn't a learning curve. Tesla pretty much made it pretty much like Apple makes their iPhones. While there is an somewhat need to read the manual it's so intuitive you really don't the car tells you everything so in the end she just says bikers will die there she is and tesla autopilot review bikers will die by heather knight roboticist and at the top it says right here uh, Computer science professor at Oregon State University. I say, flaming idiot, 
looking for a clickbait title. So, besides this 20 minute teardown of her article, what am I getting at? Well, at this point, you're all very familiar with Mike and myself doing our famous human collision tests with autopilot. Started a year ago, uh, May, June 4th, 2017. <coughs> Firmware 7 did not detect Mike. We repeated our tests again and in more detail in, I believe it was November 2017, after firmware 8.0 was released, the initial version. We tested it again. Wow, what a difference for pedestrian and human de detection. Not only did it detect Mike, it did so flawlessly on every test. So we advanced it one step further after this article completely pissed us off. So this time, we didn't just do a pedestrian detection. We did pedestrian on bicycle detection. And guess what? It worked great. Not completely flawless. Uh, you'll have to wait and watch the video. But guess what? It did work, and it did stop, and it did keep the car from hitting the bicyclist. And in only, I think it was one case, would it still have probably hit the bicyclist, but only because the bicyclist not only swerved off the road, but then back into the road from the side, and the bicyclist really would have just ended up purposely sideswiping into the side of the car and bouncing off. The car blasted the warnings and gave the alerts. At that point, only someone completely asleep behind the wheel could have made the situation worse. So coming next week, Monday, which would be, where's my calendar here? It would be Monday, June 26th. We will be releasing our footage of the human on the bicycle collision tests with autopilot. Tune in. We also did a crash dummy test because we wanted to see what would happen. Now our tests are based on reasonable speeds, uh, and 18 to 30 miles an hour roughly. You know, speeds you'd be on on city streets where there'd most likely be bicycles around you. Uh, but obviously for safety, and even though we tried killing Mike and failed, uh, if if we tried a higher speeds to, for the testing and uh, actually hit Mike, Mike, Mike might have damaged my car. So instead we built a radar reflective crash dummy and tried some more tests. And results were amazing. So, hope that you all come back. And uh, this was a pretty venting video for me. So, gosh dang, why do these idiots just go running their mouths off when they have no idea? I think this is another career herder. Uh, please leave the autonomous vehicles to Tesla and Sanford University, please screen who you're giving diplomas to.